Hi, I'm Kai Chang Tom, and you're watching Ask Kai, Quick Tips for the Apocalypse, a series of short videos in which I answer all your questions about how to survive and thrive and be happy in the middle of the pandemic. Yay! So today's question is super juicy and I love it because it is at once heartfelt and full of the delicious drama that every queer young person and let's be real, older person and middle-aged person, every queer person finds themselves embroiled in inevitably at some point or other. The question is this, my best friend and roommate has started romantically and sexually engaging with this couple who has been cruel to me in the past. They have lied to me, spoken badly behind my back, intentionally gone out of their way to make me feel left out. And my best friend just doesn't see my side of it. He continues to engage with them, to sleep with them, and worst of all, I am stuck living with my friend in the middle of the pandemic and I can't get out of the lease. Ah! So what I love about this question is that it comes from like the messy everyday lifeness of queers, you know, the secret life of dramatic queers. All of us go through something like this at this point, which is not to say it's not serious. It is, but there isn't like a huge like values question. It's not like, how do we save the world? It's how do I live my life because my best friend is dating people who are mean to me? We're not always living with that best friend though. So that's an extra complication. And here's what I'd say about this. As adults, it is incumbent upon all of us to do this thing we call individuation. What is individuation, you ask? Basically, it is learning that we are individuals who are separate from all other individuals on the planet, although we are interdependent on them. So individuation is the basis of boundaries. We've probably heard about boundaries. Yes, we're queers after all. We love boundaries, but we don't know how to do them. So individuation means the more separate from you I become, right? The more space there is between me and you, the less your decisions are something that I can control, the less my behaviors are something that you can control. And the key thing to individuation is to know that our feelings are not something somebody else can change. And this is a really difficult reality to accept, no matter how old or how wise we are, because most of the time what we want is for someone to help us fix our feelings particularly when we're upset at them. So in the case of this best friend, we're upset with him because he is seeing people we don't like. So when we turn to individuation and boundaries, what do they tell us? Well, by common sense, they tell us we can't control who our best friend dates. It's actually just not something we can do. On the other hand, our best friend, <laughs> our best friend communally, is not able to um, make us or control us into feeling good about their romance. So what do we have to do as adults? This is tricky, but here's what I recommend. We need to lay our feelings out on the table. Best friend, I do not like the people you are dating. You are free to date whoever you want, but just so you know, I don't like those people and it kind of makes me feel bad that you're dating them. We have to own our own feelings and not put the responsibility on the other person, right? So not you're making me feel bad by dating these people and you need to stop. And I, I think the question asker already knows that. It seems to be implied in the question. But just for the audience out there, we can't control who best friend dates, but we can own our own feelings about it. And for best friend out there, well, what I would hope to see is some version of, I'm sorry you feel that way. Your friendship is important to me. Hopefully it is. And then I'm going to continue to date those people because I really like them or I'm not going to continue to date them because I don't like them that much and your friendship is more important to me. It sort of depends, right? Either way, we have to own our own behaviors and our own actions. And likely most situations like this are going to turn out that the best friend is not going to change who they date. So then the question becomes, how can we keep a friendship 
or at least a roommate ship, because in this case, the people live together. How can we keep that relationship respectful while also respecting that everyone is allowed their own dating partners and their own feelings? And this is the mark of truly adult conflict resolution, because you know it's quite easy to go into the place of my way or the highway, right? You don't date them, or you're a bad person, or you accept who I'm dating, or you're a bad person. It can be both. Um, how do we find the both? This takes mm, compromise or and or collaboration. So compromise might be like, uh, I'm going to give up something and you're going to give up something. I'm going to turn uh, my face away from the people you are dating and you're just never going to talk about them. But another way might be like, hmm, well, let's collaborate and check in about how things are going over time. Is there a way that best friend can talk to dating partners about how I'm feeling left out, lied to, hmm, mistreated, bullied, Perhaps best friend could lay down some boundaries of his own to the people he's dating. I need you to treat best friend in a particular way so that we can all move forward with respect. So this all sounds really nice and clear and clean. And of course, in the actual doing of it, it will never look that way. It's going to get messy. Our inner children always wake up in the middle of conflict. And those inner children can't believe I'm using the phrase inner children in an advice column video. How very new age, Kai Cheng Tom. I think it's a useful metaphor because really we often revert to feeling how we did on the schoolyard, right? My best friend is talking to people who are mean to me or my best friend is trying to stop me from having other relationships in my life. And those feelings never go away, that I'm never going to be special enough to be prioritized. I'm always caught in the middle and I don't know what to do. So we want to acknowledge that messiness as it comes up and to remember that as adults, conflict, particularly everyday conflicts, right? Because these conflicts um, are not necessarily life-threatening. There's something everyone has to go through. These conflicts are an invitation for us to extend ourselves, to practice individuation, and to really lean into what it means to do conflict in a healthy way. I'm okay, you're okay. I have my boundaries, you have your boundaries. How can we hold mine and hold yours in a respectful way? So that's it, folks. That's the advice. You've been watching Ask Kai, quick tips for the apocalypse. Stay safe, wash your hands, don't throw illegal warehouse parties, maybe. See you next time.